We are at Araki Raceway um, chatting to Mike Du. He's going to tell us something about the track that they've got here. So the track's probably about 15 years old. Um, we built it on my cousin's front lounge um, after a long stint away from slot cars from the 70s and 80s. And we decided, oh yeah, let's, let's build a track. So we built it in his front lounge while he was still a bachelor. And it was there for a couple of years. Uh, we've never built a track before. The, and the guy who did the routing had never routed before. And so he did it over the weekends, over cans of beers. And, and, and uh, he did a pretty good job. So there wasn't a, a crook corner anywhere. So we were surprised. Um, it's a um, four-lane um, track. Uh, we've um, used copper tape rather than braid. Because braid was mega expensive back then. Um, and um, we actually set it up so that there were driving, movable driving positions all around the track because we just didn't have enough marshals. So that was a bit of a, a laugh. You always had a different driving position every, every week. Um, we got um, connected with Henderson and with uh, Dave West. And, um, and so we had only a small group because there's only so much room we, could, uh, we had in the lounge. And, more junk and then then my cousin got married and the wife said I want my lounge back so out went the track and all his junk as well and so um, he was ma he managed to find the storage unit um, to store all his junk and put the track in and that was about probably six years ago six or seven years ago that we moved it here and it's a bit more room uh, it would be nice to have more room um, but we managed to get the track in um, the, the tr current lap, well, we call it a technical track because there's a lot of tight corners on it, but there's also a lot of flying tracks. Every lane feels different. The current track record is held by a steel chassis Palmer International and it's flat three seconds. So um, I think most of the RTR stuff, fastest RTR, um, I think is a thunder slot. I think we've got that down to about three. 38 when it was new, 3738. But uh, most most cars are around the the mid to low four seconds. So um, it's a uh, it's an entertaining track, and um, it's it's always changing. Track conditions change all the time, but um, we like it. And uh, um, I don't think we'll ever say that we're totally comfortable with it. And 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 one day I'm going to run it in reverse. And that'll just throw everybody off and it'll take us another 10 years to learn the track again. So it's a, it's a good little track. I mean, it's not the biggest one around uh, compared to, say, Henderson. But mm. um, uh, you'll find, basically, that uh, you don't need the biggest Hori's motors to get around the track fast. You know, you know, the preference that we're finding now is we go small, uh, smaller, lower-powered motors, mm. which don't overwhelm the chassis, and, and we get a lot more closer racing than that. And that's our track. What I'm doing is a quick check on the cars, not official scrutineering, because if there's something that's not right, the guys have time to do something about it. So it's just a simple... What will you be looking at? Gear ratios, motors, inserts, tyres aren't sticking out, and later on we'll get the scales and we'll weigh them. Okay. So it's just the simple stuff, and I think it might be a 12. Ooh, check on that one. Almost. Yeah. <laughs> Almost made it. 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 Why have you put the sticker on the car? I'm serious. Uh, if it ever comes off, because hopefully it won't, I don't know what made it put it back on. And you are going to be on yellow. Okay, drivers ready? Marshall's ready? Yes, folks. Okay. <laughs>
some cars that we thought you know they were fast but we found there was a lot of disparity between drivers so by introducing a slower engine to the class um, it brought back parity and it made it easier for guys to tune their cars and made it more competitive within the class and everything else and we we came to the realization that by putting a smaller powered car engine in the car all those things happened you know we we did quite a lot of testing and, and we've ended up basically with a group of cars from different manufacturers where you can add an 18k motor and race them side by side and have a lot of fun. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, is having a lot of fun. So, Paul, do you know if there's other clubs and groups that also race 18k or is it just us? Uh, I assume Henderson, yes. Um, and you folks? Um, yeah. But worldwide, people seem to want to go more and more power, and um, with that you get more and more complications. For us, it's always been about having enjoyment, um, not taking it too seriously, but getting that good side-by-side -side racing. And, and by bringing the 18k motor in, we've done that, we've managed to do that. In fact, we've now come up with a formula for a 14k class, um, which, which is basically putting even less power into a chassis, which means as a driver, you actually have to really physically thrash them along to with an inch of your life to get the performance out of it. But you still have that closeness of racing as well. So a lot of these chassis are actually being overpowered as far as tuning-wise by the motors that people are putting in them. And by detuning them, you get as fast, if not faster times out of the cars because the chassis are working as they should do. Mm -hmm. 